Soft power is really important in today's world because many of the issues that we face these days are fragmented. The world is very interconnected, but a nation state can't manage climate change or managing pandemics or biodiversity and all these issues. They need respect, they need to be listened to around the world, and soft power can really help to strengthen a nation's position, a nation's voice. Well, the pillar of soft power that I know best is obviously the media and I think the media is a very effective pillar or tool of soft power because it's able to engage people globally and en masse. So the BBC World Service that I used to work for reaches over 420 million people every week. So that's a huge advantage when you're, you're trying to strengthen the nation's voice and trying to catch the ear of the world. Uh, I think uh, an obvious example of a soft power nation that, that does very well is actually Singapore. Now Singapore is quite small, uh, it's sort of surrounded by much bigger and one might argue much stronger neighbours, and yet uh, it has a very strong image, it has a very strong economy, and in soft power terms relatively it, it punches beyond uh, its normal kind of resources in the position you might normally think it would assume. And that's because it's managed its sort of soft power equity or collateral very well. It's been a fascinating debate here at the, uh, the Global um, Soft Power Summit, the Brand Finance Index launch, uh, because we've been able to hear a lot of different perspectives around soft power, not just the usual kind of pillars or tools, but people coming from all sorts of different directions, all sorts of different countries. And I've been struck actually about how much unanimity there is about the importance of soft power and how it's effectively achieved.